Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. In this week's show, we'll be taking a look at Crazy Sue, developed by an unknown group from Germany and published for the first time on the front cover of issue one of Amiga Fun magazine in November 1990. The game was then re-released in 1991 on the front cover of Amigo magazine, which was another German publication and sometime after 1991 it found its way into the public domain where it was subsequently released on the PD soft disc number 2448 which is where I had it. I bought many PD soft games back in the day and I had a vast archive of those and that's where I first came across this game. It was then converted to the Atari ST, the PC and the Commodore 64 and in June 1993, it was released again, this time on the front cover of Amiga Action magazine. And in the year 2000, it was then published on the Aminet archives, where it is available for free to this day. So this, to my mind, will always be a public domain release. And yes, I had this on that public domain cover disc for quite some time, but I never really got anywhere with it. That is until March and April 2015, when this game was voted for in the 2015 International Games Competition. And what you can see right now is actually live footage from that games competition, which I recorded at the time. Even though we don't usually take a look at PD games, we did take a look at Deluxe Gallagher in Season 1 and we took a look at some Pac-Man games in Season 2. But here we are in Season 3 and what we find is a platformer, it's a side-scrolling platformer and you will find everything on the level will kill you straight away. There are no easy ways out, you have to time things to perfection otherwise you're going to take many deaths in this game and for that reason it can be quite frustrating and nonetheless the time ticks down as well so you can't afford to take your time in this game. Pressing the fire button we will be introduced to the first level where we set off from our hut and we have to get all the way to the castle via a forest and a mountain and some very hard traps between here and there. Crazy Sue can jump quite a height if you press and hold the up direction on the controller and otherwise she will simply hop along the ground and sometimes you can get some speed together on these levels yes you will gain a bonus but with time remaining at the end and you can also find extra goodies that we can collect and in the meantime we'll just have to avoid all these traps and all these enemies. level comes a brand new set of music and the first level music is quite active and jolly and is repeated on the title screen but as you can see it's a little like a Rick Dangerous game because the player has to master a perfect formula and to get that to perfection and if you can perfect those round robins and those attacks on time then you shouldn't get killed and you should have no problem in this game but you may notice standing on the very edge of platforms and then we don't get hit and sometimes you have to jump from the exact perfect spot otherwise it's a choice between collecting an extra life or dying and deaths will occur frequently as you try to master this game and try to perfect that timing and try to land on the exact pixel we need to be safe and so you can see we are dodging pine cones dropping from the trees at the moment and after dodging the last one we still have to jump over the enemy to get through onto the next level Level 
three, the difficulty curve tends to jump as we try to jump over these rats. And if we pause for a second, then the rats will gobble us up. And so, yet again, we have to observe the perfect route and the perfect timing. And trying to rush these levels means the rats will run along the bottom of that screen and kill us on contact. Luckily, the controls aren't too bad and they are quite responsive. Although some things do require pixel perfect jumps and leaps of faith, at least the control system is adequate to that job. Having landed on one of the most difficult platforms, it's the most difficult jump in the world. If you touch the fire, you'll die, and if you touch the water, you'll die. So, of course, you are landing between a rock and a hard place on the third level and the difficulty it really does jump in leaps and bounds and it spikes on this level and it really can put off the casual player from trying to get any further you can see trying to rush that level we are landing in those rats and again that is not a great way to progress in this game and you have to take your time and perform that to the clock every single time and if you miss one thing then unfortunately there is no way back because the screen does not scroll in the opposite direction, you'll have to keep progressing in the right direction and hopefully you can learn a few tricks and tips like this. Jumping directly onto that platform makes it a lot easier to get through and get by all these enemies. In this case, the fire enemies require some kind of dedication because if you mistime those, of course, you'll get fried and the traps on offer are at least advanced from the spike variety that we usually get on most platformers. But look at that mistiming that jump yet again. We are wasting those lives left, right and centre here. And it's only the third level. If you really want to get far in this game, you have to get through this first time every time. And wasting these lives on the very last difficult jump before the fourth level begins isn't very opportune at the best of times. level is quite daunting and to add to that we have some quite daunting music as well which really does place the player in some kind of atmospheric realm trying to get through this game and the music on offer is a mixed bag some of it is very jolly and very well done some of it is very atmospheric some of it is very rocky and some of it is absolutely dire but you get everything on this game and unfortunately you don't really get any sound effects those did appear on the pc version but on the amiga we have this great music Four starts off with a bang and you really have to run through that and jump over all these boulders and find the safest place to jump over those otherwise yet again it's an early grave and it's one switch death in this game so there is no energy involved it's hit or miss and as long as you miss all those and don't get hit and time things yet again to perfection through trial and error just like really dangerous you'll have to perfect these and then you'll find an easy time of it I can't help feeling that those things poking out of the ground look like fingers, but this is not a graveyard scene from the computer game Chiller on the Commodore 64. This is definitely an Amiga public domain game which appeared on all those magazines, and back in the day I didn't get this far with it. You can see level 4 does progress for some time, but at least it gives us that great soundtrack, and learning how to master these things isn't too hard when at least you can enjoy yourself listening to that music. item on the right is our first weapon and that's a lollipop but to save us trying to get through these very difficult stages let's just take the shortcut and in here we'll find similar to Mario and Sonic we'll find bonus rooms and bonus tokens to pick up for some more score because this was actually recorded during a high scoring run that's precisely what I want to do and exiting the top of this won't take us to the end of the level it will take us to level 5 And that's the end of that particular playthrough. We didn't get halfway through that game, but we managed to get on to level 5, and from there we gained the high score table, which is at least a great feeling. I 
again, the music is a mixed bag and some players may find this music annoying, but at least it gives us some kind of jolly music because this game only came on one disc and as far as I know it was always meant to be a public domain title developed for magazines and not really a public release. See, in the comparison zone, this game was converted to the PC and the Commodore 64, which you can hear the music of right now. In the bottom right corner, we can also see Crazy Sue 2, that's Crazy Sue Goes On, which was yet another magazine cover disc title, which later went on to the public domain, and I have this disc in my PD Soft collection. Crazy 2 also had that great soundtrack and perhaps that is one of the better aspects of these games, at least they came with a nice soundtrack and though the sound effects are pretty minimal I'm not quite sure whether you can turn those on and off and as far as I know you cannot. Look at this, back onto the level 2 and you have to perform that round robin jump exactly every single time otherwise you will die frustratedly and the comments on the Lemon Amiga website definitely went into the fact that this game was not bad certainly not graphically bad but it could be frustratingly difficult if you fall over the same trap and the same enemy time and time again really knows who created this game but it was apparently developed and coded by Hieronymus Jumpshoe and that was a pseudonym of course and Thorin Oakenshield which sounds something from The Hobbit but they developed and coded this game the graphics and the music were created by DJ Braincrank again probably no relation to DJ Cruikshank but they were German developers and no information is available on those guys Playability on offer is just about acceptable once the player masters a few neat things in this game, including pushing up to create a nice big jump, otherwise hopping along the floor isn't very productive, and the enemies do require some kind of respect, you can't just march through this game gung-ho, yet again and expect to survive. You can take shortcuts and you can take liberties and you can be brave on most parts of this game, particularly on this stage. But you can see sometimes, although the collision detection is very accurate, sometimes that can be swayed one way or the other. And so even at this stage, the player can take some risks. I like how this game reminds me of many console games and many arcade games with the basic scores and the bonuses being handed out. And there isn't really too much to look at on the screen except for those graphics and there isn't an amazing digital readout with lots of instruments going on but you can see as we climb up back over this mountain yet again there are some things which appeal and that sky was in fact copper shaded and you can see these boulders are in fact shaded to give them a pseudo 3D effect even though the landscapes as you can see are solid blocks which have been repeated in a block pattern so this game is very basic but it does demand some kind of respect simply because the enemies and these obstacles aren't a breeze to get over and as I say we only collect our very first weapon at the end of this stage and that very first weapon is pretty measly but after you collect that then the enemies will require us to blow them away and if you collect the lollipop and die then you will have the lollipop beginning of this level and you can blow away all these boulders with the lollipop and get some extra bonuses and score but what I found is taking your time to blow up those boulders is very difficult and that is time consuming and on this particular level it doesn't give us any extra time to mess around killing items and objects so the best thing to do is to stay on the move and remember that formula and to do that every time
time of having this I didn't really have too much respect for this except for it was well coded and everything seemed polished but having now ventured through onto the later levels of the 10 available in this game thanks to the Lemon Amiga EAB games competition I've managed to get up to stage 6 but unfortunately I didn't record my stage 6 run and so you won't get to see that in this guide but what you will see is me trying to get far and look at that we finally found that lollipop again and this stage is actually the petrified forest and if we get through all these petrified objects piled up on top of each other and destroy these enemies now which block our way which are now crucial now that we've got that lollipop we are now under the time limit and we are under fire from that time limit because we do not have the time to actually take on these enemies don't know about that cut through which gives us all those bonuses you will die on that section and if you do well you get on to the next section and this is it and this is the section we died on before yes again it requires those pixel perfect leaps and good timing to get over those before we return some more petrified forest items and for that we gain an extra life as well so the difficulty really does spike and goes in spikes in this game sometimes it's very easy and sometimes it's frustratingly difficult to master the art of jumping and avoiding all this stuff I think for a public domain release i.e. it was released for free absolutely no charge whatsoever I think this ranks up above some NES classics which they got charged maybe $25 for those and for a free game you really cannot complain about any of this but you really do need respect and so fortunately I did not get beyond that jump on that particular playthrough and so for the rest of this guide we'll take a look at the long play available on YouTube again provided by Ricky C you can see where you make it to the castle and there are many doors on offer which take us to the great wizard at the end of the game and the gameplay really does not change from level to level and most of the tricky jumps we've actually passed already so it really doesn't get very much harder towards the end of the game and it really is difficult towards the beginning of that game which can really put off that casual player see the graphics are quite good towards the end and those ghosts remind me of 101 games on the Commodore 64 who use graphics like that but on the Amiga I think it's a well done effort and well polished the ones who can get far in this really do love it and the ones who can't get anywhere with this game really do hate it score for this public domain title Crazy Sue is currently 52% on the Lemon Amiga database and Amiga Power gave this 5 out of 5 which is 100% many people said that this wasn't bad and was worth at least 8 out of 10 on the Lemon Amiga database and I can say that this game well perhaps deserves a 7 for all the things I've mentioned already but some extra firepower wouldn't have done any harm Thank you for watching another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. Thank you.